There's this dream of uh, trying to dream big. What's up guys, it's Jason here and welcome to my YouTube channel, Food Insight. If you asked most people what they knew about Filipino cuisine, you would probably either get a blank stare, mentions of balut, an already developed egg embryo that is boiled, eaten from the shell and looks graphically like a small chick, or of Jollibee a Filipino fast food chain that is worldwide and sells mostly American fast food. Jollibee Food Corporation has 1,300 chains worldwide and 37 in the United States. It's not a small feat considering that given its menu offers burgers, fried chicken, and spaghetti, it's competing with the likes of McDonald's, Shake Shack, KFC, and countless others. The story of how Jollibee developed from two ice cream shops in Manila to a multinational corporation is a testament to the importance of recognizing opportunities and being flexible as an entrepreneur. Today we'll talk about what is Jollibee, how Jollibee started from very humble beginnings, and why Jollibee is so popular and always so crowded. By the end of this video, you'll be a Jollibee expert and might be craving some balut. But before we begin, drum roll please. If you wouldn't mind just tapping that like button for the YouTube algorithm, I would really appreciate it. The more engagement a video like this gets, the more likely the YouTube algorithm is to push it out for more people to enjoy, and as this is a brand new channel I started this year, I appreciate it a thousand fold. In fact, I also respond to all comments and feedback. If you've tried Filipino cuisine, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for new videos each week. Thanks for doing that, and now let's continue on with what's going on with Jolly B. A Humble Beginning The founder of Jolly B, Tony Tan Katong, is actually a chemical engineer by training who decided to go to the entrepreneurial route in 1975 after touring Filipino dairy and ice cream brand Magnolia's factory. He took action by becoming a franchisee of Magnolia Dairy's ice cream products and subsequently opened two separate ice cream stands that he ran with the help of his family, Kuipo Ice Cream House and Kubao Ice Cream House. He was 22 years old, a recent college graduate. All of this didn't seem out of the way and was made possible by the financial prosperity of his entrepreneurial family of Chinese immigrants to the Philippines, who gained success after his father opened a restaurant. Like many better-off entrepreneurs, he started his business with his family's savings of about 350,000 pesos. Interestingly, while ice cream might seem like a surefire winner in the Philippines because of the tropical climate, many customers who came to both ice cream houses wanted hot meals. Kaktiong capitalized on that demand and in 1978, after having hamburgers and other hot foods outsell ice cream products year after year, he converted his former Magnolia ice cream parlors into fast food shops. After much soul-searching for a catchy name and logo, Katyong and his family settled on a smiling red bee, with the bee being a symbol of hard work and its byproduct honey being the literal fruit of its hard work. In case you thought Jollibee meant something in Katyong, it actually means click like and subscribe! Just kidding. It doesn't mean anything. It's a mix mash of Jolly because the family wanted to be associated with happy times and bee. Jollibee was officially born and the family had so much confidence in the brand that they invested in registering their logo officially in the Philippines to start with, as well as incorporating the eponymous managing company Jollibee Foods Corporation. The logo would soon become synonymous with family values and excellent hospitality in the Philippines and to overseas Filipinos. It became synonymous with the ultimate Filipino success story. With the often touted competitiveness of the restaurant industry, it seems shocking that by the end of 1978, the same year that the family began to sell hot food only, there were only seven branches in Manila. Just a year after, the family decided to franchise the first outlet of Jollibee in another part of Manila. Tokyong described his mission at the time as very day-to-day, -to, -day, to serve great tasting food at affordable prices. Vision. At that time, what we were doing is just to serve great tasting food at affordable prices. At the same time, Tokyong always had the dream of growing bigger and bigger within the Philippines and eventually overseas by focusing on taste, quality, service, and price on a daily basis. Fighting off McDonald's by 1981, McDonald's opened its first branch in the Philippines, ironically by another Chinese Filipino businessman named George Yang. McDonald's opened up to much fanfare and served mostly American fare of hamburgers and fries. Despite Jollibee's strong track record, in 1981 it had two dozen franchises throughout the Philippines. Tokyang was advised by well-meaning friends to shy away from the competition, do like other businesses and do not try to confront the global giant. In true Rocky fashion, Tokyong showed the fighting spirit that explains Jollibee's success. 
he did his homework and formed a game plan. Tokyong even flew to the United States to do his own first-hand research. When Tokyong and his team finally deliberated on the strengths and weaknesses of their own business and that of McDonald's, they came to the stark realization that because McDonald's had much deeper pockets, they were able to absorb more losses and support streamlined logistics. Still, Jollibee focused on its own unique and somewhat innate advantages, being a Filipino success story and understanding Filipino taste buds because they were founded and developed in the Philippines. Just as importantly, Jollibee played up to some of the ingredients that made McDonald's what it is, such as a colorful and memorable mascot, a cheerful and welcoming attitude from the staff, and very low prices without compromising quality. It worked because the same year that McDonald's arrived in the Philippines, Jollibee made the top 1,000 corporations in the country. By 1984, it moved up higher into the top 500 corporations in the country and it dominated market share by diversifying its offerings so that in addition to its hamburgers, there was also spaghetti, french fries, fried chicken known as Chicken Joy, a yum burger, and a palabok or rice noodles with meat or seafood and egg. Jollibee doubled down on its advertising as well, launching extensive TV ad campaigns that focused on the entire family enjoying quality time and food at the chain. It's probably no surprise then that by 1986, it opened its first overseas store in Taiwan. 1987 was another interesting year because Jollibee continued to make inroads overseas as they opened a location in Brunei and moved into the top 100 corporations in the Philippines with 570 million pesos in sales. Continued Expansion and Filipino Diaspora Jollibee continued its expansion in the Philippines, the rest of Asia, Middle East, and North America gradually. It is fueled partially by the capital it raised by listing publicly on the Philippine Stock Exchange in 1993. That capital injection also helped it diversify its business in the Philippines, turning it into a food empire with the acquisitions of Greenwich Pizza Corp. in 1994, Chinese fast food chains Chow King Oriental in 2000, and Yang King in 2004, as well as Hong Zhuang Yang, a Beijing-based kanji chain, in 2008. Additional domestic acquisitions include the pastry and cake chain Red Ribbon in 2005 and barbecue fast food chain Mang Inasal in 2016. Jollibee Food Corporation also bought the firm that operates Burger King in the Philippines, essentially owning a competitor in the market, as well as leveraging their subsidiary company Fresh and Famous, through which they operate Chow King Oriental to introduce Pho 24, a fast, casual noodle house that already had a substantial presence in Vietnam. Since announcing the introduction of Pho24 in 2018, Jollibee has expanded the brand rapidly with one store in the Philippines and 34 outside of the country. Their acquisitions don't stop in Asia either. In 2018, Jollibee acquired Colorado-based Smashburger, famous for its slightly more higher-end 100% certified Angus beef patties and 345 stores total in the US. That same year, Jollibee also bought 47% of fast casual Mexican chain Tortas Frontera for $12.4 million. In 2019, Jollibee made clear that it was here to stay in the USA as it acquired coffee chain Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf for about $350 million. It's very similar to its 50% acquisition of Highlands Coffee and Hard Rock Coffee headquartered in Vietnam. With significant acquisitions in the US and Asia, it's clear that Jollibee wants to be an Amazon of sorts for the fast casual food world. If you're enjoying coffee, burgers, spaghetti, or guacamole, you should be enjoying it from Jollibee. Given their presence in Hong Kong, China, Indonesia, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, and Vietnam, for instance, it shouldn't be that difficult for consumers to unwittingly patronize a Jollibee-owned franchise. Jollibee's expansion strategy and its success has relied partially on the pronounced Filipino diaspora worldwide within the US, Saudi Arabia, Canada, UAE, Malaysia, Japan, and Australia, having the most significant migrant populations. It's been estimated that about 10% of the Philippines' total population of 108 million actually works overseas to send remittance back home. It isn't a coincidence that Jollibee often open in locations that have a large Filipino presence and require little marketing because they have such strong brand recognition among Filipinos everywhere. For instance, Jollibee opened its namesake as well as Chow King and Red Ribbon stores in the US, UAE, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia to capitalize on that longing for a taste of home among the Filipino expat community. When Jollibee opened in Jersey City, where there's a small Manila street, it ended up drawing lines around the block for a few days in June 2012. Community pride in having a Filipino-grown chain go global is an indisputable factor in its success as well. A domestic helper in Hong Kong who frequents Jollibee there confirmed as much by explaining, Jollibee can do what other food chains can do, franchise to other countries. It means that Filipinos can make their name around the world.
This is the goal of Jollibee's founder to this day. Explore new acquisitions, and our, our focus is on companies that have strong superior product and that has potential to grow. Strategy and plans for the future. Very energetic at 68 years old, Kak Chiang is no longer CEO of Jollibee. His brother, Ernesto Tamantiang, now serves as its CEO, president, and director after having been on Jollibee's board of directors since 1987. Yet, Kak Chiang's vision for the company still holds sway over its current strategy. The family is united in its goal of having Jollibee become one of the world's top five restaurants in terms of market value. More precisely, the Jollibee C-Level team wants a 50-50 split from domestic and overseas sales. One of the main challenges in achieving that goal has been the fast growth within the Philippines. For the overseas market to grow to Filipino proportions, it has to excel rapidly and that's one of the reasons behind buying local chains in countries like Vietnam and China that have fewer Filipino workers compared to Hong Kong and Qatar. Jollibee acquired local chains in both countries because it's much easier to grow food chains that serve fare already known to its local audience. In Vietnam, it's pho with pho 24, and it's kanji from Hong Zhong Yong in China. It's the path of less resistance compared to only opening Jollibee chain restaurants and spending the marketing to spotlight its fusion Filipino and American cuisine. After all, people typically default to what they already know and like. For its own future, Jollibee also intends to keep playing to one of its historical strengths, playing to the local market by ramping up its food research and development. With a now global empire and very stiff competition in each market, Jollibee's management has to make decisions about where to source ingredients to ensure consistent quality, as well as adjusting the taste of core Jollibee offerings, such as their sweet spaghetti, for instance, to the local taste. And that brings us to today. The forced shutdowns worldwide through much of 2020 put a dent in Jollibee's ability to break even with their American acquisitions, with both Smashburger and Coffee Beans and Tea Leaves continuing to lose money and since January 2019, brought Jollibee's profit margins to its lowest in 18 years. Jollibee had to close 486 stores due to COVID-19. The mixed results, mostly due to COVID-19, led the chain to invest almost $351 million to revamp its online point of sales and delivery platforms, as well as partnering with DoorDash. With the possibility that cooking more often at home becomes a way of life, Jollibee aims to be more strategic with its post-COVID-19 strategy. The company's focus is on markets that are already recovering quickly from the pandemic, regardless of whether they already have a location in those cities, both in the US and Canada. A prime example is in San Francisco, where Jollibee didn't have a location for about 10 years, but is now set to open a location on Market Street in the heavily Asian city. The company also intends to continue doing outreach and partnerships with communities that appeal to a diverse demographic, such as when Jollibee opened its Times Square locations and also partnered with the Madison Square Boys and Girls Club. It doesn't intend to rest on its laurels nor its built-in loyal Filipino following. It wants to take the world by storm, one Chicken Joy bucket and one Yum Burger at a time. Let's see what the year ahead brings for Jollibee. So with that said, thank you so much for watching my video. There was a significant amount of research, production, and food eating that went into making this video possible. As this is a brand new YouTube channel I just started this year, if you enjoy videos like this, please click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell. I respond to all comments. If you haven't seen already, check out my Hamburger War YouTube series covering topics like how Shake Shack is taking over the world or the In-N-Out Overnight Success Story. As always, stay happy and healthy and stay tuned for another episode of Company Insight next week.